so cool and terrifying and horrible and amazing about the Manhattan Project is not uranium, but plutonium is the one that they actually had to test and like figure out. Uranium, they like had a good handle on it. They made this one bomb. They're like, that'll work. We don't even have to test it. But plutonium's like. But they, but they were like, we don't have we don't have enough. We want a yeah, different way to make bombs. Yeah, just and we want case. a scarier, weirder one. And, and to me, that's how I see is it. Is plutonium the one that uh, that Doc Brown was trying to get in the parking lot when he was shot by the Syrians? I think so. Wasn't is, I was just gonna say. Libyans. I was like, man, Sorry. that movie really saw into the future. <laughs> yeah, plutonium makes sci-fi happen. It it's makes terrifying. what happen? Sci-fi. Okay. So I want to talk about plutonium and the demon core, which yeah. is the scariest thing ever. It's and it's a lump just of like, metal. Yes, it's a lump of metal, and like obviously, an atomic bomb works because a chain reaction mm -hmm. is set off and is sustainable. Like with uranium, like they shoot uranium at more uranium, mm -hmm. and that does it. With plutonium, it's just like 95% on its way to being critical mass, where it can just, uh, do, just it all on its own. do it all on its own. And then it's like all the experiments that are done are figuring out how close you can get to that and where you can get to that like trigger point where it hits critical mass. And so the demon core, this is something that was going to be in the third atom bomb that ended World War II. Um, but Japan was like, Surrendered and then they didn't do any. They didn't good drop another bomb. The works of that next potential bomb still went on to kill people. World so, War Two so, ended. So, the, so after the World War Two ended, there's this bomb that they ended up not using, but it still killed people. Yes, because they were still doing experiments. So it's called the Demon Core because two accidents happened, and the first one was August twenty first, nineteen forty five, when Harry Dalian. Um, he was 24. Yeah, you forget how young how all these young, scientists were. So young. Yeah. What he was doing is he was arranging neutron reflectors and playing, playing, experimenting with, with those and um, figuring out how close they could get. But he, he had it set up, but he, um, and there are these tungsten carbide bricks and you move them around manually. He accidentally dropped one for a fraction of a second. Tap it. Yeah, it's just like, it, it's like, like drop you do it, something pick it that right back fast. Up. Yeah, and that was enough radiation to, poisoning. To, to, to like the thing that was blocking the radiation? No, or it set off the It set off a chain reaction. It set off the chain reaction and he pulled it off and stopped it. But, but how long did it like how long does that take? 25 days. Oh my god. Isn't that horrible? So it's like your blood mm -hmm. just starts breaking down. Like your there's pictures of his his hand immediately started mm -hmm. breaking down like your DNA just disintegrates. Yeah. And so the second incident was a little less than a year later. He was a 35-year-old physicist and he was leaving Los Alamos and he was training the guy who was going to replace him. He was showing, I think there were eight people in the room. He was so close to it and showing Alvin Graves. Alvin Graves was looking over his shoulder and he just, the screwdriver slipped and it went down and he flicked it off and flicked it onto the floor like that fast. In that half second though, there's reports that it's just like a blue light and warmth just like came out and he flicked it off and it was over. And because Alvin Graves was peeking over his shoulder, Alvin Graves was pretty much shielded mm -hmm. and Louis Slotin took all the radiation and he died within nine days. Well, honestly, if you're gonna if you're gonna get radiation sickness. Probably well, faster, faster is better. Yeah. I just I love like, that I love so that powerful. you just like have this lump of metal. It's a paperweight. Like yeah. for most of its time. And it's and fine then, until until you do something, reflect some neutrons back at it, and it's like, I'm gonna go critical now and irradiate you to death. Yeah. I also find the Manhattan Project fascinating because it's a bunch of like 20 and 30 year olds yes. working on this unthinkable. Inventing new science yeah, like, and like, like, like leveling up of science. Yeah. This will never happen again where we learn, like we realized something about the universe and we were like, oh, what if we did this? Right. And you can create you know, nuclear submarines, you can create bombs, you can create power plants, it, it, like this massive amount of energy that was hiding in this place that we didn't know to look for it. And it's just these kids, from my perspective, and I'm sure they're there like partying and getting drunk. Like you don't think about it that way, but like, the, like how many, what do you think their condom budget well, was? Oh, to, like, well, I mean, a lot of them were married because they got married young then, but like they- Married but, people can use condoms too. That's true. <laughs> in some ways oh, no. it, it reminds me of the Chernobyl thing, which I did this, there was a, a Reddit post that had like hundreds of pictures from the whole Chernobyl thing and each one had a, a caption underneath that went into pretty deep detail about the whole story. And it's the same kind of thing where sometimes it just feels like 
the way that humans play with parts of the universe is like a kid with a gun. Yeah, especially in those first moments when we don't really know what we're doing, which is why I like artificial intelligence right now is a little scary, and a lot of people are talking about like, I don't know, man. Let's be a little careful. Have you seen RoboCop? <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this snippet of Holy Fucking Science. If you would like more, you can see the full episode at youtube.com slash holyfuckingscience. That's right. Holy Fucking Science is a podcast about science that is not for children. It contains mild violence, swearing, alcohol consumption, and sometimes the science isn't super vetted, so don't share it in the classroom. For more Holy Fucking Science, we are on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Also other places where you might be able to find podcasts. Thank you for watching.